Hey everybody, before we jump right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that these things are streamed on Twitch and if you want to hang out with me while I'm live, you can follow the channel, will be the first link in the description. Alright, get away pieces, I'm going to be trying out another London system, will it be a Chigorin or a copycat or both, still odds for both, 96 or 9 of 6, Chigorin or copycat. I'm telling you, this is what you get in all the games below 1500, I would say. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> what do I know? While Fianchiero appears on the board. And to be honest, we could try to trap this bishop. But I'll just play it against, like we do it against the copycat. Oh, for the bishop trade. Against bishop f5 lines in general, if you want to keep it simple, you can go for this and just offer the trade. Okay, when opponent plays like that, bishop e5 already forces the rook to move, meaning that he's going to lose the right to castle. So we could do that for sure. I'll just keep it simple, you know. I just want to get a standard game. I don't want to like be super annoying in the opening. I just want to show some, let's say, typical ideas. and. The problem is in these kind of lines now. If we play c3, how do we make progress? Like 95 is no longer that effective. We don't get the attack. So e4 is no longer gonna be easy to achieve. And therefore, that's why we break with c4. Because we need to get an edge somehow. And that's what most people don't understand about when to push c4 or c3. Basically, we push it when we need it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, yeah, just trying to develop in normal fashion and perhaps just expand on the queen side. Could also think about taking and then delivering the minority attack with rook b1, b4, b5. I think both plans are doable. I think I'm going to go for the minority attack one and then take on d5. If they take with a pawn, that allows knight b5, which is kind of annoying. And when they do that, I think generally we just want to keep the tension. Allow them to take because that will improve our pawn structure. And we have ideas to go e4 as well, which will force them to take on c3. So let's see. He could still trade. I think that should be played at some point by him. He definitely doesn't seem to be very interesting in exchanging the light squared bishops for some reason. But uh, fine by me. Whenever they have the CD95 line, we kind of want to keep the uh, tension by playing bishop g3 and allowing them to take. So he just goes knight d7. I'll just play the move rook c1. We'll also just take there. Create a weak pawn. We'll also do e4 for knight c3. Then bishop g4 only move. King go h3, win the bishop pair. Many tempting lines. I'll just go rook c1 though. This is simplest. And funnily enough, we still take with a b-pawn in case he takes. Even though we have spent a tempo in playing rook c1, it's still important to get that pawn closer to the center, I'm telling you. So, gonna do that anyways. And then we're like happy to reroute the rook. We like rook b1. Can trade on d3. Don't really mind. Gonna be taking back with a queen. Play c5, which is actually not a bad move, but you can do e4, bishop g4. Now it's actually time to just take. And expecting him to take this way. Takes that way, okay. So first of all, like d5 is pretty tempting, just to get the uh, strong pass pawn. That might actually be instructive, but also bishop d6 with dc5 ideas. So I think this is just like simply crashing now to go dc and bishop d6. I think it's the most precise way. Followed by queen d5 and so on. Do you guys want to see like the d5? I feel like it's not so easy to make progress with a pass pawn there. We'll just go DC instead. 
I knight takes allows bishop d6, winning the exchange. And like rook c8 is better. But then still same idea with additional queen d5. And now oh, these just wins material using the London bishop for the fork. He's kind of forced to play like rook c8, protect the knight, or maybe move the knight away, let's say. Knight e4 could be an alternative. Gonna be cashing in that rook, and then still, he won't be the easiest position to win ever. Um, but with the extra exchange, should definitely be quite tempting. Opponent taking some time here. That's a bishop to d6. Guess a bit of a surprising move, but um, he should definitely keep the knight. I think e4 is the most active square. Yo, chicken pants, what's up? How's it going? You missed the Hikaru raid. <laughs> Alright, we see rook to e8. Gonna be cashing in the knight. Up three piece. Queen a5, hitting the bishop. Just um setting off the enemy Fianchiaro. That is what I think the doctor ordered, and let me go in queen d4, activating the queen while gaining a tempo. See king there. Play knight e5, activate a knight. So what else? Should we go for like the direct checkmate or not? I feel like we need some pieces for the direct checkmate, don't we? I feel like knight g5 could be a pretty fun try. Knight g5, king takes queen g7. <laughs> but that's a bit like extreme. There's no need to like sack pieces like this. <laughs> Only if you're like a degen. Hmm. What's like the easiest way to win this position? <laughs> kind of struggling to understand. Okay, I guess just gonna be going. You wanna sack? No need to sack. Just going for the end game, guys. I'm gonna bore everyone to death with this end game strategy. We're two moves away from mate. I don't care. We're just gonna be going for the end game. What if I sack my knight, I miss the mate, and then the guy escapes? That would be a terrible conversion rate. Just go rook a1, collect that free pawn, remain humble, trade all the pieces, get your free win. I mean, you guys don't like free wins or what? I like my free wins. It's always much better to go uh, home a bit later than to go faster and frustrated. I can tell you from... Uh, personal experience so just gonna be cashing in the free pawn now and definitely happy to exchange that for f7 now see we just went for that took a pawn exchanged some stuff position is obviously much easier now no need to like consider any kind of shenanigans on the king side we can just go for this kind of stuff The opponent literally has nothing to play for. Like, try to put yourself in his situation. He literally has no moves. He goes queen e2. That is pretty wild. What is he trying to do with that? How about we just make a loop? Rook a8. You can try to use the knight. Attack f7. Hmm. 
Ghost King to H5, so kind of running away from the mate, but don't think it's quite how it works. Can give a check. Actually, simplest just to take here. <laughs> Taking away that, preparing queen f3, queen h3 on the next move, and there's gonna be no way from stopping that. Can come closer with checks and. Yeah, now this is gonna be basically it on the next move. Just queen g5, no way to stop that, and we uh, managed to get this one in. Okay, yeah, this was like strange opening. Could have gone for like something, I guess, uh, more like 95, you know, trying to play g4 and the bishop gets trapped like this and bishop was trapped. But I simply didn't want to like uh, avoid any, I mean, not to avoid, but I didn't want to get into this stuff that's a bit more advanced. I just wanted to sort of keep it simple and get like a game. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're interested in uh, checking out my London system course, will be the first link uh, in the description. So thanks again, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.